When I first visited the museum, I became interested in winter, because a series of kimonos featured images of tundra and cold, not typical of Japan, except on Hokkaido in the north. It reminded me of a Russian winter in Siberia. I asked my museum guide, was the artist ever in Russia? And he replied, yes, he was, and for a very long time, as a prisoner of war. Near the end of the Second World War, like many of his comrades, Ichiku Kubota was taken prisoner. More than once the master visited Yasukuni temple to admire the blossoms of the sakura, the cherry trees. The trees were in full bloom at the time, and people were singing si jing verses in the Chinese style. The master kept saying, sadly, as he listened to the singing, I survived them all and I saw he was crying. A veritable blizzard of sakura petals accompanied the verses. That was amazing. I remember him saying to me, I've survived them. We had been captive since August, and we set off for Siberia, never having experienced the winter in Manchuria. As we walked, my feet hurt beyond all bearing. Food was scarce, and maybe that was the most painful thing. Just imagine, the soup looked and tasted more like water. We went to a collective farm for potatoes and loaded a whole lorry with them. The lorries and carts bounced along, spilling the potatoes onto the road. We picked them up, along with manure and stones, and it was only when we warmed it all up later that we knew what it was. From these potatoes, the Japanese prisoners made dumplings called dango, rubbing the tubers against graters they'd made themselves. They punched holes through metal plates and grated potatoes through them. As a prisoner of war, Narita was lucky he returned home alive. Years later, he put his reminiscences on paper and showed us his sketches. Thanks to his memories, we can imagine the conditions under which Ichiku Kubota lived. Here we are, walking to work with saws, bars, levers. It was hard to saw trees. We were deployed in pairs to cut down huge trunks. And in January, we were told that it was not a job for us and sent to help indoors. We were released from that nightmare. Instead of felling trees, we fetched water for the kitchen. And he said his comrades died in captivity and he didn't believe he would return home. Of course, we, who lived through that time here in Japan, didn't undergo such difficulties. But the master encountered such hardship that my eyes fill with tears every time I think of it. It was impossible to dig a pit in the frozen ground to bury the dead. 
So they were put on top of the hill and covered with snow. We had nothing to give the dead, therefore we made dango dumplings of snow. In April, when the snow began to thaw, we were sent to Europe and the dead remained on the hill. Ichiko Kubota remembered that despite all the hardship of his life in captivity, he was not cut off from his favorite activities and they didn't include only drawing. The prisoners of war had nothing, not even a single piece of wire. When they managed to find some at a construction site, they made wigs and other objects from it and spent their time that way. They toured military units giving theatrical performances. There was just one basic piece of stagecraft missing. The amateur theatre had no actresses. But that was no hindrance, because in traditional Japanese kabuki theatre, all the roles are played by men. When male actors in costume and makeup entered the stage, the Russian guards couldn't believe their eyes. They were amazed each time a beautiful Japanese woman appeared on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> 